It is a frosty morning here at the test field, and the sun is very low in the sky, roughly as low as it's gonna be all year. It's early December, and it is the worst time of year for solar plane flying. But that's sort of why I'm doing this test flight. Just out of curiosity, we're gonna see how the solar plane V4 here performs in these non-optimal conditions. So if you saw the last video of this plane, you'll remember that it crashed. And since that crash, I replaced all the broken solar cells, glued all the bent foam back together, replaced the propeller, put a new spar in it, and now it's ready to fly again. So after the crash, I assumed it was because my push rods were too flimsy, but now I'm kind of thinking that it probably crashed due to aileron reversal, or in this case, aileron and elevator reversal, because the wing here has quite a bit of twist in it. So as the control surface right here pushes up or down, on the trailing edge of the wing, it's gonna cause the whole wing to twist downwards or upwards. So the wing was just too flimsy. So to help with that, I put another carbon spar right back there to kind of stiffen up the trailing edge of the wing and make it not twist so much. Now, another thing that's different is last time I just had a LiPo battery and now I've got a lithium ion battery. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour four cell. So I should be able to get longer flight times even when you're not considering the solar power. But what I'm gonna do is look at the battery voltage at takeoff and the battery voltage at landing and compare those two to see if the solar is doing anything on a day like today. So that's enough talk. Let's get this thing in the air. So we are in the air and the plane is just circling around the home position. And I'm just gonna let it circle until the battery gets low enough to land. You know the conditions are bad for flying the solar plane when the plane flies above the sun on the horizon line. So the plane's up there in autopilot just doing its thing. So I may as well make myself useful and fly this little guy up and get some air to air video. This is the iFlight Nazgul. It's a little five inch freestyle quad from banggood.com. <laughs> And now, a quick note about the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. Did you know that bad guys could potentially use drones like this one to gather personal data and hack your internet connection? Just recently, a company in Texas reported that they used drones to map wireless networks and pinpoint devices connected to them. This was only done for research purposes, but it could potentially be used to help hackers attack devices that are connected to the internet. As technology progresses, there are more and more ways for your data to get exploited online. By subscribing to NordVPN's service, you can hide your IP address so hackers can't find out where or who you really are. It's also useful for protecting your data while traveling, blocking ads, unlocking Netflix, and more. Use the promo code RCTESTFLIGHT to get 81% off a three-year plan for this holiday deal. See the link in the description for more info. So one thing that might hurt the performance a little bit since the last flight was that when I replaced some of the solar cells from the crash, I replaced them with like Alibaba cells that could be quality control rejects, whereas most of the cells are directly from sun power. But then again, I also did bevel the trailing edge of the wing since the last flight, so that could increase the performance a little bit. Also, we're in Seattle right now, which is pretty far north. The sun is much lower in the sky up here than it would be down south. So I dropped the altitude down a few times via mission planner and it didn't crash. That increase of airspeed as it descended a little bit was what caused the aileron reversal last time. 
So that's good. That carbon spar in the back seems to be working pretty well. Another thing is I don't think the current readout on Mission Planner is calibrated correctly, so I don't think that's true. We are now at about 14 volts. So that goes to show that it's definitely not flying on 100% solar power, but that's no surprise given the conditions. You can take these lithium ion cells down to like 2.5 volts per cell before they start to get damaged, but my current plan is to land around 3 volts per cell. That would be 12 volts total on the whole battery. I'm just standing by this trailer because it's so warm. It is such a nice day today. I'm pretty amazed that this thing is flying for as long as it is. I mean, look at the position of the sun in the sky relative to the total horizon. It's like so, so low. The battery voltage has actually just started to drop quite a bit faster. It's now down to 11.5. It was at 10 point something a second ago. So I'm gonna land now. Nice and easy landing, okay. So my suspicion of the current sensor being off was correct. After the flight, I hooked up a current measuring multimeter in series with the battery to measure the current offset. And it looks like our current measurement was about 2.2 amps high. So we'll just go ahead and do a little photoshopping and there we go. That's more like it. Now note that this is the current draw being consumed by the motor. It doesn't show us anything about how much power the solar cells are making. Next time, I'll try installing two current sensors again, or put the one current sensor in front of the battery so we know how much it's relying on the battery versus the solar cells. Here's the voltage and GPS speed data. It looks like it started to get a bit windier as the day progressed because the GPS speed started to vary more. But anyways, that was a fun little test flight, and now we know the Solar Plane V4 only works during the better half of the year, and the repairs were successful and it's ready to go for the coming spring. So I'll slide it under my bed and wait until then. Thanks for watching, bye.